All right, so welcome to another one of my videos. I'm actually going to go ahead and do a live installation of Windows 8. I haven't heard many good things about Windows 8, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a whirl and see what it's like. So there's a live installation, as you can see. We have a standard what language, what time format, and what keyboard. I'm assuming you're U.S. As if you're watching this, as most of my viewers are from the United States. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So on the next on the next window, we actually have an install button. You want to go ahead and click that. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure it's going to set up. But yeah, you're actually watching a live demonstration, and uh, hopefully this comes out well. Uh, from what I've heard and from what I've read, it's supposed to be not horrific, but... We're gonna go ahead and write it off as a trial. Can I write it as a trial? No, we're gonna just go see. Uh, should be in the back of the windows. Yes. Let me see. All right, I'll be right back. Alright, so I was not aware that you have to get the product key off their website. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and leave a link to the description. Uh, I guess you have to plug in the link in order to try to get it. So this is not on my own key, so I'm not going to go ahead and block it. I'm actually going to go ahead and type it in. I'll leave the link in the description. I'll be right back. Alright, so I got the commercial key, or not the commercial key, the product key off their website. Let's see if it works. I hope, I, I'm pretty sure I typed it in uh, pretty well. So, a little bit of more about Windows 8. Bef in, okay, so that went in. So, you gotta accept the terms. I'm gonna do a cut, um, upgrade in. No way, hang on. Oops. Oh, great. Th this is a total fail. Let's try again. I should just go ahead the advanced because this is not an upgrade. We want to go ahead and install it. So I'll be right back again. Let me try this again. All right. So now this is the second trial. We went again. So I guess you have to go ahead and do the custom install. So we got 25 gigs of unpartitioned space. You want to go ahead and use that. So that's going to go through the file process. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to take a while. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to go over to the website if you're interested in downloading a copy of Windows 8 Preview. Uh, where is it? I had it somewhere around here. Oops, that's Amazon looking at new laptops. You have nothing to see there. Okay, so here we go. Here's a home pa web web page. We have the Windows 8 release preview. It's supposed to be completely different from Windows 7, so I'm not too sure. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna get Windows 8 particularly for any of my older computers, like my uh, home PC or anything like that, because I just don't feel like migrating anything over to Windows 8, and I don't feel like doing any compatibility issues that might occur within my hardware and Windows 8 so if there are any like XP to Vista that was a bit of a nightmare so Windows 8 I'm probably gonna end up just getting it when I buy a new laptop so I'm not too eager to get it, get it because one I don't have any touchscreen interfaces that I might be interested in getting it on so that's gonna be that's really gonna be just it so if you want to go ahead and just if you want to go ahead and download a preview for yourself, if you want to mess with it in a virtual box, or you actually want to install it on a machine. I don't know why would you, but it is possible. So you can go ahead and download a 64-bit or a 32-bit version of Windows 8. Uh, the downloads will set you back 2.5 gigabytes for a 32-bit or 3.3 gigabytes for the 64-bit, as, as to be expected. Usually, 64-bit um, iOS ISO image is slightly bigger, as you can see. And it and if you want to activate the product, you gotta get this public key that's on their website. So that's basically to it. You just gotta do the uh, custom uninstall. So it's basically traditional from Windows 7, and nothing has really changed from here. But uh, we'll see as we head into the main interface or the main login screen. So we'll see. I haven't. I've only read stuff on Windows 8, so this is a first impression kind of deal going on. So I'll be right back. All right, so the installation has finished. We're gonna go ahead and see what's on the next screen. Uh, just give me one second. Let's, hopefully, this won't take too long. All right, so after two restarts, uh, we finally come to the first screen of personal light personalization, I believe. So we can go ahead and pick colors. I do not know for. Oh, that's pretty. They got nice selections, I guess, for nice. buttons. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and stick. Oh, there's orange, there's green. We're gonna go ahead and stick with the aqua blue or whatever that is. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name of virtual PC. 
if you're actually interested in doing this yourself, you can actually go ahead and Google something called Virtual Box by Oracle. Actually, it's free and open source, I believe. You can go ahead and download a copy of that, and then you can go ahead and download yourself a copy of Windows 8. So that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and just name it Virtual Box just to, for keepsake. Hit next. Let's see what else is next. All right, so we can go ahead through the settings. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the default because that's what everybody uses. I'm not gonna go. Ahead, I'm not gonna put an email for for the time being. I suppose. Okay, let's put uh, expunge dot malware and gmail dot com. Let's go ahead and see. All right, give me one second. So we're going to go ahead and set up an, a Microsoft account, I don't know why. So we're going to go ahead and just put some random stuff. So I'm going to put a simple password. Uh, well I guess it's making select and make character password, which is good, you know, for uh, to make passwords stronger these days. But I'm just going to go and put a generic password. I'm not too interested in putting... Oh, they don't match? Let's go ahead and try again. Oh, I guess they do. I'm going to put... Number four. If anybody's interested, let's go ahead and next. Phone number. Go ahead and just hit next. All right, give me one second because I really don't want to give this stuff out. Just give me one second. All right, so it actually goes ahead and asks you for a birthday. This is very untraditional for for Microsoft. This is asking for way too much information if you ask me. I remember the old days when you used to just plug in your disk and you were really ready to go. Um, then I'm gonna. Ha oh, I guess it's asking from. This is really strange. I never. I've never had to deal with this with uh, Z W W. I really hate this because I never get these right. V K X. Let's go ahead and see if that works. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and create an account. I really don't want to. I still. I, I don't understand why. Why we have to create an account just to get your operating system up? It's already bad enough. I don't really like registering my products to to any manufacturer. When your computer asks to register your computer to the manufacturer for X, so you can get your promotions and so on and so forth, I really don't like that because I really don't like getting spammed by the manufacturers or Microsoft for for crying out loud. I mean, I just don't want to be bothered. If I if I want to buy a new laptop or if I want to buy a new product, I'm just gonna go online and look for it. On sale. I'm not very interested. Of when was the last time you actually bought something off an email ad that you got? I don't know. I guess it's just me. But we're gonna go ahead and just wait for a bit because it's asking me to wait. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pause the video and I'll be right. Back. All right. So after an average of I don't know 45 minutes, maybe we finally got to the Metro user interface. Well, let me go ahead and just change the background color on this thing. There it is. So you can go ahead and see it. So, let's go ahead and see what we get. Uh, I don't understand how this works, but this is the first screen you get. You have your camera, your Xbox Live, if you have an Xbox Live. Do, do PC gamers even use Xbox Live? I don't even know why this is on here. Okay, music, that's fair. Maps, photos, video, calendar, explorer, and so on. Messaging, hmm. mail. I guess it must be some sort of email client. Let's go ahead and just click the desktop. Okay, so we're back on the desktop. It looks a lot much. It looks nice, actually. It's really nice. Let me go ahead and put the. Uh, ooh. Okay, so now we ran into a problem. Okay, I guess the, the, the start button is the Metro user interface. Okay. Uh, so let's try to figure out how to get to my computer using this Metro user interface. The uh, okay, I guess we'll go desktop, and I guess we'll go File Manager, Windows File Explorer. That's one way to get into it. So we got desktop, we got my computer. Let's go to my computer. Oh, so there it is. So we we figured out a way. Pictures. Oh, look, looks like they got some nice tabs up here for you to look at. So pretty neat. Get your manage and your manage icon. I get some sort of management system they got going on as well. Okay. Ooh.
Just manage library. Huh. So we're going to go ahead and exit out. Alright, so the desktop is very clean. Let's go see into the presentation. Let's see if that's changed any. So I wonder if we can... It looks like there's no way to default back to like Windows 7 or anything like that in the system. So, alright, so that's basically it. That's basically the installation process. As you can see, I'll probably have more videos coming up. So we got our network interface down here. Oh, that's pretty neat. So we're connected to the Ethernet cable through the virtual box. I wonder if I can go ahead and install the add-ons on the system. The guest additional install the guest additional system. So I loaded up the uh, image. All right, so there it is. Let's go ahead and run it. Oh, that's neat. That's one way. Let's go ahead and just run next. Looks like everything looks like sharper, more like squarish. Back in Windows 7. Everything seemed a lot more like a little roundy-ish and different color scheme actually. So that's what they changed on here. So let me go install everything on here just to get it more usability out of Windows 8. Go ahead and I don't think it's gonna work either that or it's gonna crash the system. Oh no. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and reboot again. Let's see, because this is my first reboot. Let me let go finish reboot reboot the system. Let me, let me unmount my image. I don't know. So, so far, I can't really say much about Windows 8 or if I like it or if I don't. Uh, it's not that I hate it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm very in the middle ground right now. So, I really, there's not much to say. So, that's basically my overview. It's just very different, like, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and everything in between was very similar to one another. So, everything was fairly in the same spot. You had your Windows Start button at the bottom. You had your icons all over the place like your regular documents, recycle bin and so on and so forth when you came with Windows Vista, I mean Windows XP. Windows Vista changed it up a little bit which a added a much nicer GUI interface. Much nicer color. It was a lot more eye candy to it. But everything was roughly in the same place. Then Windows 7. Okay, so so now that we're back on the screen, the usability on this thing at first impression is not very good. Okay, so I guess you have to drag that in. And you have to log in through an email account. So we're going to go ahead and choose my spell. Uh, was that the correct password? Okay, so that's the correct password. Ooh, it, it, it seems more like a Chromium experience kind of deal. Like, if you ever use the Chromium laptops, that they just have, like, this one login screen to log into your, like, web browser, which is the Chromium web browser, and you have your apps, and then if you hit the start, or if you hit the start button, no, did it crash on me? Uh, you gotta bear with me, because, uh, yeah, it looks like it crashed, it looks like it froze up on me. But anyway, so, to sum up, uh, app preview? No, I don't want to see app preview. Uh, to sum up, I don't hate it. I don't like it. it. I'm very in the middle ground. It's definitely different. If you used, um, what's it called? Ubuntu 10.04, and then you've recently changed to Unity, it's kind of the same feeling like everything. You have to kind of relearn everything because it just completely changed everything. Uh, I think in the next video I'm going to go ahead and see if I can print out a document or try to simulate of printing out a document on this video. So I'm going to end this video now to keep it short. But yeah, so far it's different. I can't say I hate it or love it. But thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful. And uh, if you want to go ahead and do this yourself, you just got to go ahead and uh, download VirtualBox from Oracle. Or there's other, uh, there's other applications out there, but that's the one I use. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, take it easy.